Hey everybody, Mrs. Bianchi, we're looking at number five. Lorraine's checking account has a balance of less than negative $200. So I think it's a good idea to plot a hypothetical value that would be less than negative 200. So if negative 200 is here and it's less than, that means it has to be to the left. So how about we pick, um, how about negative $400 as a hypothetical amount that she has, right? Which statement is true about how much Lorraine owes the bank? Now there's this amount that she owes, right? This green amount. And then there's this amount that she could owe. If she owed $200 then she'd owe the blue amount. So sometimes when you just take this away and pull it away from the number line, sometimes that helps you to be able to answer the question. So um, if we're saying that her account balance could be this, right? This green amount. Was there any way that A would be true? Lorraine owes exactly $200. Is that what this represents? No. So we're not going to pick that. B, Lorraine owes exactly negative $200. C, Lorraine owes less than $200. So if this represents what she owes, is this amount less than this amount? Because remember, this is the owing $200 line. Isn't that a bigger line than the blue line? The green line is a bigger line than the blue line, people. Choice D, Lorraine owes more than $200. So this is owing $400. This is owing $200. Is the green line more than the blue line? It is. Now, what would you show on your piece of paper? You could show the hypothetical amount, which would be the absolute value of a negative 400. And you could compare that to the absolute value of a negative 200 and use the little comparison circle. So if we simplify this, that's $400 of owing, like owing $400 versus owing $200, right? The absolute value of a negative 200 is 200. And when we look at it this way, then it helps you to understand that this is a greater amount owed than this amount. The green line is a, a greater distance from zero than the blue line. So does everybody see that it's choice D?